Lewis Howard Latimer Lighting the way, Lewis Latimer was preparing a technical drawing on 1879 when he got his big break. A man with a bushy beard and mustache entered the machine room in Bridgeport, Connecticut, where Latimer was working. The visitor was her... Hira Mam Maxim, chief engineer of the inventor, an inventor at U.S. Electric Lightning Company. Maxim saw Latimer's work and was excited to find a highly skilled draftsman. Maxim, Maxim hired Latimer on the spot to make drawings of his ideas and also serve as his personal se- secretary. At the time, U.S. Electric Electric lighting was just a year old. In his new job, Latimer wasted no time learning everything he could about electric lighting. He soon became one of the top experts in the field. The technology of the electricity and light bulbs was improving quickly. In little more than 10 years, it would change from being a novelty to an everyday convenience. Latimer, a black American whose parents had escaped enslavement, played an important part in that technological revolution. Freedom In 1842, Lewis's parents, George and Rebecca Latimer, risked their lives to free slavery in Virginia. The the young couple hid on the neighborhood northbound ship was being pursued by those paid to track down people who escaped enslavement. They were in constant danger until they made it to freedom in Boston, Massachusetts. Even in Boston, they were not completely safe. Slavery was illegal in Massachusetts, but a visiting Virginian man recognized George. Friends helped hide Rebecca, but George was arrested and jailed. It seemed likely that it would be taken back to Virginia. However, his case attracted the attention of abolists, people strongly opposed to slavery. They organized projects to help him, and more than 65,000 people signed a letter demanding protection for any escapes, escapees from, the, from enslavement. A black minister finally paid $400 to the Virginia and slavery to secure, secure George's freedom. Rebecca, though, was still at risk. Fears of being caught and returned to the to life of enslavement remained with the couple throughout their following years. Thanks to their parents' courage, the four Latimer children were born into freedom. Louis was the youngest born in Trusilla. Chelsea, Massachusetts. In 1848, as a young as a boy, he worked in his in his father's barber shop, helped him hang wallpaper, and went to school. Lewis was 12 when the first shot of the Civil War was fired. To protect their system from slavery, the Confederate States of the South had split from the United States. Lewis's older, older, two older brothers joined the Union Army. In 1864, Lewis claimed to be, claimed to be, 18, the legal age of enlistment, and joined the U.S. Navy at age 16. He served as, as a gunboat, the USS Ma- Massasoit. The Civil War ended in 1865. Where the Confederacy was defeated, it brought an end to the legal slavery in the United States. Throughout his life, Louis Latimer remained proud for, of his service in the fight for freedom for black Americans. The Drawing Board Latimer returned to Boston after the war. He took a job at his, as an office assistant with the patent law firm. Law firm. Patents are an important step in the invention process. Inventors register their plans with the U.S. 
patent office to prove that their inventions are in fact new and their ideas are, are original or an improved upon something that already exists. Patents allow inventors to earn money from their inventions and block others from copying or stealing their ideas. Others can be can use their inventions but get but must get permission and pay for the right to do so. The work interested Latimer from the start. He taught himself the necessary skills for of mechanical drawing and was later pro- promoted to a position as the firm's head draftsman. In 1874, he patented his first invention. It was an improved toilet compartment for trains, though it was never built. Latimer had hoped to end the, cha- the chattel slavery in the United States, who led the greater equality in the po- opportunity opportunities for black Americans. However, they still faced prejudice and discrimination. Few white controlled schools, organizations, or businesses treated them as equals. Black Americans were blocked from most professions and skilled jobs jobs, especially if the jobs involved working directly with white people. In light of these limits, Latimer growing success was even more remarkable. In 1876, Latimer contributed to the pattern, patterning of the telephone. Alexander Graham Hambell, who revealed the patent of the telephone, taught students who had, to, had a difficult time hearing. Latimer had an idea from an electric device that helped the students hear better. He met the bell to discuss his idea, then sketched technical drawings. The drawings helped Bell get the pattern of the revolutionary technology. Many other inventors developed similar inventions and designs around the same time, but Bell was the first to secure a patent. In 1879, Latimer moved to Bridgeport. Port, Connecticut, where he was hired by Hera Maxim of the U.S. Electric Lighting. At this new job, the young draftsman and an inventor joined the effort to see to use electric electricity to create workable lighting systems, a better light bulb. In the 1870s, developing a practical incandescent Consent light bulb was the goal of many inventors, including Maxim and Latimer. Incandescent lamps transformed electric current into light. As with any electric appliance for a light bulb to work, the current must flow in a complete loop or closed circuit where we where we switched on a light, we connected the light wires that close that close the circuit, which we switch it off. We break the circuit. And constant light bulbs were a lot high on both conductors and resistors. Conductors are material that allow electricity to pass through easily. Copper wire, and water are examples of good contra- conductors. In contrast, resistors are materials that slow the flow of electricity. Carbon is an example of the resistor. Insulators are materials like rubber and glass that prevent any electric current from passing through an incandescent in lamp. Lamps. Conductors deliver electricity from a power source of the to the bulb's filament. The filament, usually a thin trip, strip of, strip of metal or other material, is made of the resistor. The filament resists the passage of electricity through it, becoming so hot that it glows to produce light. The challenge in the late 1870s 
was to develop the filament that was both cheap and long-lasting. The famous inventor Thomas Edison led a team of people trying to solve the problem for years. Finally, in 1879, Edison's team developed the filament from carbonized bamboo. It provided to be affordable and durable, lasting more than 1,200 year hours. In 1881, Vladimir and his colleagues College John Sev Nicholas Nichols developed his own incandescent light bulb. A year later, Latimer patented the new way of making carbon filaments that was more effective than Edison's method. Among the pioneers, Vladimir proved himself a talented problem solver at electric lighting, gained popularity. His knowledge was very valuable as a light, tree lights and other lighting systems because more common, became more common in the 1880s. Especially in cities, Vladimir helped with lighting projects in cities such as New York City, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and Montreal. Canada. In Canada, he learned French to speak with French Canadian work crews. He worked long hours, starting at the factory, at the factory at seven each morning. After the day's work, he helped install wiring and lamps until the night. He and his wife Mary also traveled to London, England. There, he helped launch the U.S. Electric Lighting Lamps Factory. Latimer's knowledge and abilities brought him to the Edison Electric Light Company in New York in 1884. He became chief draftsman and patent specialist in the company's legal department. He used his experience to settle disputes about the use of Edison technology. Encouraged by Edison, Latimer wrote a book in constant electric electric lighting, a practical des description of the Edison system, published in 1890. The book described technology that was transforming not just the United States but also the world. In it, Latimer celebrated electric lighting as one of the great achievements in human history. The Legacy of Louis Latimer Latimer never ceased to invent and create. In 1896, he received a patent for an early form of air conditioning. He designed the safety elevator in 1894 and patented a lock, locked hat and coat rack in 1896. He was also a talented musician, musician and wrote poetry and plays. He also shared his belief that art and science were closely related through creati creativity. In 1980, Latimer became the only black American named as one of the founding members of the Edison Pioneers. Their inventors, engineers, and other specialists who have been part of the Edison team during the early years. The Pioneers made electric lighting an everyday reality for people from all walks of life. Along with his many achievements, Latimer cons consistently stood up for ra racial equality. He volunteered his time and energy to help train young people of color to develop job skills, including mechanical drawing. In 1895, he wrote a public letter that shared his hope for the future. I have faith to believe that the nation will respond to our plea for equality before the law, security under the law, and an important opportunity by the thought of my maintenance of the law, to enjoy, enjoy with our fellow citizens of all races and com complexions and blessing guaranteed as under the con constitution Louis Latimer died in Flushing, New York, 
in 1928. The film is now a museum dedicated to his achievements in the work of other black American and innovation theorists. In 2006, he was named a member of the National Inventors Hall of Frame of fame and honored for his life's work in making the world a better and brighter place.